And it's really trying to understand the basic biology of Yersinia pestis. How does it cause plague? Wyndham Latham, seen here giving a lecture, was a former professor at Northwestern University and an expert in plagues. Today, he is at the Cook County Jail waiting to stand trial for the 2017 murder of his boyfriend, Trenton Cornell Duran Lowe. He's charged with homicide, first degree murder. Latham's lawyer, Adam Shepard, argues that his client's expertise in bubonic plague could help in the fight against COVID-19. He is one of the leading researchers of microbiology in the entire nation. This fact is beyond refute. The bond motion seeking Dr. Latham's release includes letters from top experts vouching for Dr. Latham and the need for his expertise in battling COVID-19. Before Latham was arrested, he was cleared by the government to handle the most dangerous biological agents, including the Ebola virus. And Latham is currently helping to fight the threat of coronavirus at the Cook County Jail the site of one of the most aggressive outbreaks in the country. For instance, um, staff was handing out medication without gloves or without hand sanitizer. And Dr. Latham, early on, this was weeks ago, he, he advised against that. And I believe since that, uh, now they wear gloves or at a minimum use hand, hand sanitizer before dispensing medication. Complications from the illness have already claimed the lives of four inmates, and more than 200 are currently positive for COVID-19. He made other recommendations, too, which I believe have uh, been heeded. His attorney argues the jail is not a safe place and is seeking his release on bond. Dr. Latham's medical conditions put him at a substantially elevated risk for contracting severe COVID-19. Shepard says there is precedent for releasing an inmate early on the condition that he uses his expertise to help the government. I'd like to cash this check here and then and I'd like to take you out for a steak dinner. That was the case of Frank Abagnale. His life made into a movie, Catch Me If You Can. Dr. Harris. Yes? Do you concur? Concur with what, sir? Abignal helps the FBI investigate crimes committed by fraud and scam artists. Most of the speaking I do when I walk up to the podium is very technical. It deals with cybercrime and identity theft, forgery, embezzlements, and things of that nature. But the judge ruled against Latham, reminded of the horrific details of his alleged crimes. Prosecutors say Latham and his alleged accomplice, Andrew Warren, allegedly stabbed Cornell Duran Lowe more than 70 times in what investigators describe as a murder sex fantasy. Dr. Latham has persisted in his plea of not guilty of those charges. The allegation involves an alleged stabbing of uh, Dr. Latham's close friend, while Latham maintains his innocence, Warren has pleaded guilty and is expected to testify against the former professor. For now, Latham remains in custody, pending the outcome of his trial. We're weighing our options and may ask him to reconsider. So the doctor not getting out. Let's bring in Chanley Painter, Chanley, because this is one um, that's really difficult, right? Because you're talking, about, you're talking about murder charges here, right? We're not talking about fraud charges. We're not talking about nonviolent, low-level offender. Those are the types of people who've gotten out. We're talking about murder here. And it's a dark and disturbing murder, Vinny. According to prosecutors, when this happened back in July of 2017, the victim, 26-year-old Trent Donalo, was in, asleep in the apartment when his boyfriend and another co-defendant sneak in, and he stabbed over 70 times. And then Dr. Latham and the co-defendant allegedly flee the state of Illinois. They're picked up in California eight days later. Along the way, according to prosecutors, Dr. Latham makes a video and apologizes to his friends and family for his part, almost confessing to this murder. And he's been incarcerated now ever since. But yes, he's saying now, based on his expertise and his background, that he is should be released to help find a cure for COVID-19. But also on top of that, Vinny, the conditions where he is in Cook County Jail has one of the most aggressive outbreaks of COVID-19 anywhere. Yeah, 
Yeah, it absolutely does. But um, one thing that was pointed out by his own attorney there is that he's been helpful in the Cook County Jail. So maybe that's where he uses his expertise rather than on the outside. He helps the outbreak on the inside, which seems to be what he's doing. Uh, let's listen to more of the attorney explaining the judge's uh, ruling here. Well, the judge uh, made a well-reasoned ruling. He, he considered a lot of factors that were present at uh, uh, the initial bond hearing. The, I think the judge would uh, want more assurance about uh, what Dr. Latham would be doing if released, and uh, we may revisit the issue and uh, bring a motion for reconsideration Possibly, we're weighing all our options, but the case is a—it's a complex case. This is a person of outstanding character. He's presumed innocent. This is a case that does not appear what it seems based on the charges, and I'd implore the public to keep an open mind because he is presumed innocent and. When the evidence is aired in a court of law, we're hopeful that he will be acquitted. I'm not permitted, there's a decorum order in the case, so I'm not permitted to talk about evidence that may or may not be admitted at the trial. But we think that there is a, not a smoking gun in this case. That's our position. And, and the other part of this, in order for him to get out, he's got to have a place to go. I mean, I can't imagine that there are labs around the country saying, yeah, send us the accused murderer, please. We need him. Um, but maybe they did. I mean, in your research, did you come across any of that, that there were actual labs that were saying, please send Dr. Latham? Interesting point, Vinny, because that was not a part of this 13-page motion for bail for release. They did, however, attach 30 letters of support from friends, family, and very distinguished distinguished colleagues from all over the world who worked with Dr. Latham, saying, uh, you know, touting his expertise and that experts are needed in finding a cure for COVID-19. So they did do that, but didn't go as far as here's a place where he could work. They were basically asking for $1 million bail or bond and then to uh, go to home confinement. And the other third option was redacted. Maybe it was, not sure. It was, there was some redactions in the motion. All right. Uh, fr from my perspective, there's another opinion that's very important here, and that's the uh, mother of the victim in this case. Let's take a listen. We're very happy and very satisfied with that. And, and I honestly feel like the world and our United States has plenty of qualified scientists and biologists that can tackle this pandemic of the coronavirus 19 I, and they can do the research not someone who um is alleged sitting in jail for doing you know what they believe that they had that he has done yeah i, I agree with the mother i don't think that this is the he has the magic wand or the magic touch he would be one of many and there are many other out there others out there who haven't um been arrested for murder um and, and you know, the way I think about this, Chanley, is that if it was a screenplay for a movie for Hollywood, you know, fiction, not nonfiction, it, it might sound like, oh, yeah, let him out because he's the one person who can figure all of this out. And yes, he's presumed innocent, but he's, he's not, not to the level that he's the one that's going to wave a magic wand and make COVID-19 go away. Right. And the motion for Bond didn't go quite that far. They touted him as being a leading researcher for the bubonic plague and accelerating a cure for that. But as far as COVID-19, didn't go that far. Interesting, he is qualified to test special agents through the FBI, you know, those e like Ebola or the SARS virus. He has access and ability to to work and research some of those items. And I know that was the mother. That's, that's Charlotte Cornell. She's the mother of the 26-year-old victim. And I just 
just wanted to point out, I know that we have some photos. She goes every year to put flowers outside of the high-rise condo where her son was found deceased. Uh, the, you know, he's from Michigan, Michigan, she's from Michigan, but she goes every year to place kind of a memorial there uh, to Chicago in honor of her son. She says that he loved people, he loved animals, he loved cars, and was a very outgoing 